Hello and welcome to another Figuring Out Japan video. We sell all the coolest Japanese collectibles and figurines straight out of Japan. And you can find out more details about us in the description of this video, including our eBay store and our Facebook page. So uh, this figure, uh, sorry, this video is actually not going to be reviewing any figures. It's just going to show you a uh, display which is actually from my collection. And uh, a lot of people sort of ask uh, questions or comments, you know, things like, which figurine is going to be worth a lot of money, or which figurine do you recommend buying, or how do you decide what figures to buy, and all that sort of stuff. Um, I personally don't recommend buying figures based off what you think they're going to be worth one day, because one, you might be wrong, and they may not be worth a lot one day, um, compared to other figures. Two, you may never sell them anyway, so why does it matter what they're going to be worth? Um, and I guess the more important reason is it doesn't really matter. Like a best case scenario is you buy a figurine and maybe it's worth double what it was in five years time or 10 years time. Or maybe you buy a figure and so let's say you buy a $50 figure, it's worth $100 in five years time versus another figure that you bought for 50 and it might be worth $70 in five years time. So, okay, there's like a $30 difference over a space of five years. That's like nothing versus there's kind of like an opportunity cost of not getting the figure that you may have really wanted. Pretty much any figure is going to go up over time. It's basic supply and demand dynamics. Um, particularly popular series with like Dragon Ball. Like people are always going to like Dragon Ball. And uh, it's still popular after all these years. So, you know, these figures, they go out of supply. Um, you know, people people are still going to want them in 5 years or 10 years. So pretty much anything is going to be worth uh, you know, more over time. So personally, I, I buy figures based off what displays well, what looks good together as a display. And that does change things because sometimes there's figures that are really cool, but they don't really match, up, like the scale might be different or that particular character may not you know, particularly display well with other figures. Um, and conversely, there are some figures that uh, look really good, or sorry, you may not really want them, but they look really good with other figures. So a good example is Dodoria and Zarbon. Not the most popular characters in Dragon Ball, but they look so good with this figure. So that's why I got them. Um, and then, you know, the other, on the, on the flip side, you've got figures like Raditz and Nappa, which I think look really cool. But there was no Vegeta release. They still don't know why Van Presto didn't do that. So they kind of look a bit... They look cool together still, but it looks a bit odd without a Vegeta. So I had to really think about, you know, how should I display that. But anyway, I've reviewed all these figures separately. I'll put the links in, in the description of this video. But now let's just quickly have a look what we actually have here in front of us. So here we have the King Vegeta from the Legend of Saiyan series. You'll notice the blue base that all the figures in that series have. I really like that figure actually. It's very cool. And then we have Raditz from the new S Cultures Series 5. So this was released just a couple of months ago and I'll pick him up because if I can get the get in focus. So this is actually a customized paint job. So you'll see there's a lot more sort of red in the, the muscle lines in his legs and his hair and the armor have sort of toning, so it looks like his muscles are kind of ready to bulge out of the the armor. Really love that figure of Raditz. Van Presto really upped the game this year. And similarly, this one was also from the S Culture Series 5, but again has been modified. This one's actually been quite heavily modified, the paint job. But, uh, whoa. the mold itself isn't, so... You can buy a figure that looks pretty damn similar to this. Just the paint job is a bit different. We have all these for sale. Details in the description. That was a very cool figure. A lot bigger than I expected as well when they released it. And then, whoops. And then we have Nappa. So, again, modified paint job like the Raditz. So just more colouring and toning in the skin and the armour. It's pretty damn cool. I actually love the Scouter the best. It's actually got printing on it. So then I 
came up with two solutions to have a Vegeta. So this was the first crack at it, I guess. So this is a custom paint job Vegeta. This was released actually recently as well in the Chores or Shoe series. So he just looked like blue with the white armor, but I've changed it to when he um, first appeared in the Dragon Ball series. And then the other one is a fully, like this This mold is actually different. So this actually, so there's a few custom, but this one actually the mold is different. It was basically a combination of the Raditz and the Super Saiyan Vegeta also released in the S Culture Series 5 for the head and the hands. So, uh, yeah. That's a pretty cool one. I want to put it here, but it's uh, I don't have enough room. <laughs> it's sitting on a shoebox. So the rest of these are not... Uh, so all of those have been like custom, but again, they, they're all... With the exception of Vegeta, they're all like commercially released figures. It's just the paint jobs that seem to be modified. King Vegeta has not been modified at all. Let's look at the front. So here we have the uh, Freezer Ichiban Kuji... Um, figure and he also comes with a set of legs and tail and you've got Kui from the HSCF high spec coloring figure series and then Zarbon from the HQ DX line so this was kind of Ben Presto's main line of figures 10 years ago and they all have the sorry it's a bit dusty but they all have this sort of round black base and then Captain Ginyu so you'll notice even 10 years ago, they did actually have the Scouters, but the main improvement this time around was they actually have printing on them with the new Raditz and Nappa, but they did even have Scouters back then. So it's Captain Ginyu. Really love all the toning and the, the colouring in that figure. And then Dodoria, kind of a cute little figure, this one, I think, actually. But again, just you can actually see, like, the... Uh, if I get in focus, the, like, detail in his lips... And again, you get a scouter. Pretty cool. You can actually take the head off. So you could like get his head cut off or something. <laughs> it's a pretty funny little... Even the ear. Like, look at the detail in the ear. That's the Doria. And then... Second stage... Freezer. So this, remember, this is Freezer's like original, like real form. What he really looks like. Actually, this is one of the rarest HQ DX figures. So, I guess it looks a bit funny having two freezers in one display, but this figure was just too cool for me to pass up. And then there is Prince Vegeta, which was an Ichiban Kuji released in 2009. So, I do have other, there are a lot of other, like, um, you know, figures that have been released in the Namek and the. Uh, you know, the Saiyan and Freezer Saga and that sort of stuff, but, you know, there's things like Perfect Freezer, and there's a really cool Ichiban Kuji Vegeta holding a Dragon Ball and Super Saiyan Goku, but I guess this is kind of like a Freezer's Force series, you know, this was before, like, there were any Super Saiyans, or before Vegeta kind of revolts against Freezer, um, so, yeah, I'm pretty kind of satisfied with this, um, this one, but I did actually make one video showing pretty much all the Namek Saga figures, and I'll also put the links to all the other figures that I've reviewed individually. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, love to hear your comments or questions or suggestions or anything. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.